Hello everyone, this is Nash. Today, I would like to show you how to derive the Bernoulli's equation. This is one of the most famous equations in the field of fluid dynamics. First, we need to consider about uh, ideal fluids. What is ideal fluids? Ideal fluid is something that cannot be compressed. It is incompressible fluid. It is not flowing inside a tube. And as you can see, the cross-sectional area for A1 and A2, they are different. So, the velocity the velocity of the fluid at different points should be different. Why? Because the volume needs to be conserved. Let's look at this volume. Let's pick up a really a small portion of the whole system. And the volume is equal to the crux section area A1 times its width, which is the delta X1. If the volume needs to be conserved, and that means with a, a smaller crux section area A2, and it should have a greater width. So the delta X2 should be greater than the delta x1. And the delta x per time is the velocity. So that means the velocity v2 should be greater than v1. So inside this tube, uh, simply by changing the size of the crack section area, you can see how the velocity is going to change. And what is more, uh, the height for this two portion, for this two portion uh, of a point and b point are different like the height y1 and y2, they are different. So uh, in order to start our derivation, I need to consider about the conservation of energy. That is the work done by the external forces is equal to the change in mechanical energy. Okay, let's consider about the conservation of energy. Okay, conservation of energy tells us that the work done by the external forces is equal to the change in mechanical energy. And mechanical energy is the sum of potential and kinetic energy. So this is also equal to delta K and plus delta U. What is delta K? Delta K is the change in kinetic energy and delta U is the change in potential energy. Potential energy like MGH and kinetic energy like one half MV squared. So let's start from the first term, which is the external work. External work. The external work should be separated by two parts. One is the positive work. The positive work. Let's look at the displacement. The displacement for the portion is now pointing to the right. And the pressure, and the pressure times the accurate, times the cross sectional area is the force. And the force is now pointing to the same direction with this displacement. So the work caused by the pressure and the work done by the force should be positive. And let's look at the uh, at another point, let's say this is point B. The point B, the pressure is now pointing to the left, and however, the displacement is now pointing to the right. So they are pointing in different opposite direction, 180 degrees apart from one another. So the force caused by the pressure two, the P2, uh, that is the F2, the F2 uh, should do a work, should do a negative work. So the positive work with the positive work and negative work, let's just sum all of them. We combine the positive and negative work, it will be the total work done by the external forces, so which is the W1, the W1 is the positive work, and plus W2, this is the negative work. And what is W1? The W1, the W1 is F times its displacement. No problem. So, and uh, what is more? According to the definition, what is pressure? The pressure P, the pressure P is very simple. The pressure P is the force per area, is the force per area. So, the F can be expressed by the pressure P times the crux section area. So I can change it. I can change it. I can change the F1 to be P1 and times A1 and times delta X1. <coughs> delta X1. And look at the A1 times delta X. The A1 is the cross section area and now it's now multiplied by its width, which means this is the volume of the small portion. This is the volume. Since the a fluid is incompressible, is incompressible. So for the small portion, the volume it, it is a v1, and the volume for that small portion at point b it is v2, 
And since the ideal fluid cannot be compressed, it's incompressible ideal fluid. So the volume should be conserved. So that means the V1 and V2 should be equal to each other. And I can use a simple, uh, the same uh, capital V to replace the V1 and V2. So later, if you, you see the volume for, uh, for the volume at point A and the volume at point B, the V1 and V2, I would just replace them simply by V. I'll use the same symbol to represent the volume for the portion that we are considering. Okay. <laughs> So now I can I can I can I can keep rearranging it, which is now uh, P1 and times the volume. Times the volume. Since the volume one, the V1 is equal to V2 is equal to V. So you can simply guess that the work done by the P2, or to be more specific, the, the work done by F2 caused by the pressure P2 can be expressed by the similar by the similar result, which is P2 m times the volume. And what is more, for work one, this is positive, positive work, and for work two, it is negative. Since the force is now pointing to the left and the displacement is now pointing to the right, so the work uh, is negative, no doubt. They are pointing 180 degrees uh, opposite directions. Okay, so you need to put a minus in front of the P2V, the P2V. So now I got P1V, the positive work, and minus P2V, the negative work. So the work done by the external forces is done. So the next, the second step is I want to calculate uh, the change in potential energy, the potential energy. The change in potential energy is U2 minus U1. And what is U? U is MGH, right? So it's equal to mg uh, y2 and minus y1. Okay, and what is m? What is m? <laughs> the mass, okay, the density, the rho, the symbol rho, the density is defined by what? The density is defined by the mass per volume, the mass per volume, the mass per volume. So. I can rewrite the mass as rho times the volume, the rho times the volume. And since the volume for, for the portion at point A and point B, they are totally the same. They are totally the same. So uh, I can just write V, okay. And uh, rho V, uh, the rho V is the mass, m times G, m times Y2, and minus Y1. So done. I got the change in potential energy uh, that is the row times the volume times G times Y2 minus Y1. Okay, the last step is I want to calculate the change in kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is one half mv squared. I want to calculate uh, the difference. The difference, so it should be write down as K2 minus K1. So, which is one half times the mass times the mass and V2 squared minus V1 squared. So let's look at the let's look at the mass since the volume is now conserved and the density is the same. The density never changed for this fluid. So the mass can be replaced by rho times V, which is one half times rho times the volume and V times V2 squared minus V1 squared. So I've got the change in kinetic energy. So all this term, I can combine all this term. I can combine all this, combine all this term and plug that in back to our conservation of energy. The external work done by the forces is e oh, sorry, the external force, uh, uh, the work done by the external forces is equal to the change in mechanical energy, like the change in kinetic energy and change in potential energy. And I got the external for uh, the work done by the external forces and the change in potential energy and change in kinetic energy. So I combine all of them and plot the back to this equation. So we are almost there. We are so close. So look at the uh, conservation of energy. The external, uh, the, the, for, the work done by the external forces is now uh, positive work plus the negative work, which is P1V plus, plus minus P2V. So it is P1 minus P2 and times the volume which is equal to the change in potential energy 
that is rho times v times g and y2 minus y1 and plus the change in kinetic energy that is one half rho v m times v2 squared minus v1 squared so simply by checking all this equation you can see they all got the v term they all got the v term they all got the v term so the v could be cancelled awesome so just to rearrange it and finally we can get we can get the p1 uh, plus rho g y1 and plus one half rho v1 squared is equal to p2 plus rho g y2 and plus one half rho v2 squared okay this is the Bernoulli's equation, the one of the most famous equation in fluid dynamics, in the field of fluid dynamics. Done. So, uh, <coughs> this part has already been cancelled uh, in this uh, in high school physics. If you are interested, um, you can you can check this video. So, this is how we derive. Uh, one of the most famous equation in the field of fluid dynamics, the Bernoulli's equation. Uh, so hope you like it. Thanks for watching, and this is Nash.